Dat is niet slow man. among us to achieve what we have. This guy, last week, uh, in some country of Mr. President, by his team. Sized application of uh, vaccines against COVID-19. You could very well have chosen to do this privately and quietly, but agreeing to this publicized application will first of all boost the morale of the health sector and give a lot of assurance to the public about the safety and efficacy of this vaccine about which we have had some concerns with regard to the Nigerian public. 
We in the health sector have laid out five main pillars for this COVID-19. First is to continue to scale up diagnostics and case finding, infection prevention and control to reduce the infections that are arising in our country. Secondly, is to continue to improve the therapeutics and the case management. And you have graciously agreed to ensure oxygen plants, at least 38 of them in the country, because we have discovered that high flow oxygen supplementation is key to the treatment of COVID-19 severe cases. We have also made it a point to continue, and that is the third one, to continue to sustain essential and even routine medical services so we do not lose on the side of this area and begin to see more fatalities coming even from non-COVID cases due to fear of COVID or too much focus on COVID. We tend to continue to press on our routine medical services. The fourth is the introduction of the emergency medical service and ambulance system in your country. And it will be my privilege, Your Excellency, to brief you in detail on that, which we believe will reduce maternal mortality, under five mortality, accident mortality, and all the mortalities we see in unexpected events. And that the country's health system will be able to respond promptly to citizens when they are in distress, they know who to call upon. The fifth and the final is what we are about today, the introduction of anti-COVID vaccines. We have been a long way here. It has taken about a year of record scientific work to come about these vaccines in many countries. The shortest period it has taken to develop a vaccine before this was four years. That, that was a vaccine against mumps. So this has come up as a very fast intervention and it is for that reason that some people have apprehensions about these vaccines which governments are at pains to dispel. We in Nigeria have finally received our own allocation of vaccines. The first to come in is the AstraZeneca, which is very well known, developed in the UK. AstraZeneca is a company that is both British and Swedish, and it is now produced under license in several countries. The batch we are getting is from the Serum Institute of India, which is the largest vaccine production site in the world. Your Excellency, this vaccine is safe. It has been administered to millions of persons, and it is also well sought after. Just a day or two ago, we've heard reports of a diplomatic squabble between Italy and Australia over uh, AstraZeneca vaccines and where they should go to first. There is still vaccine nationalism. Uh, there is still hoarding going on. And we do hope that with your support, Your Excellency, we shall continue to get the flow of vaccines to continue uh, this immunization process. The process itself is simple. We are using a narrow gauge syringe, which should be very painless. And it is small quantity that is injected into the muzzle of the upper arm and they will be injected by your personal physicians, persons you know very well and trust, and the process on which they have been briefed, and uh, by the uh, authorities, uh, National Primary Health Care Development Agency, who are responsible for vaccines in the country. Your Excellency, this is about all we need to know. The after effects, as we know so far, are mild. There can be a small pain at the area where it was injected. There can be, but not necessarily so. In a small percentage of the cases, a little bit of uh, uh, perhaps discomfort that follows. But on the whole, there is no untoward adverse effect 
that's associated with this vaccine, and it has been certified safe and usable by the uh, NAFTA, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control. So it has gone through all the tests, it's been used in various countries, and it has been certified by the authorities of the state. Your Excellency, thank you for listening. Mr. President, today is a memorable day in the life of our country. And we have arrived this destination because of the sterling leadership qualities you provided in the national response to COVID-19. Your Excellency, Mr. President, about a year ago, you constituted the Presidential Task Force. And your mandate to the task force was simple and direct. Coordinate and develop a national response that is robust, multi-sectoral, in order to tame the spread of COVID-19. And we went to work with that marching order. And not soon after that, you decided to put again another committee, the Economic Sustainability Committee, under the leadership of His Excellency, the Vice President. The combined effect of these two committees in striking a balance between lives and livelihood, we have been able to achieve so much because of your directions, because of your leadership, and because of the trust and confidence you had in these two committees. And I would without any hesitation, commend you, Mr. President, and acknowledge the fact that because of the robust work that these two committees did, we were able to exit recession in the fourth quarter of 2020. I think Mr. President deserves a round of applause. Most countries of the world have been impacted by the adverse and negative effect of COVID-19. COVID-19 exposed the weaknesses of our systems. Our administrative structures were threatened. Our economy was under surge. Our social inclusive policies were exposed. So were the ones for even the developed nations. When we embarked on this journey, Your Excellency, little did we know that it was going to last this long. We had no manual of operation. And because of the purposeful leadership you provided to the Presidential Task Force, at every given time we had an opportunity of meeting with you, you listened attentively, you took notes, and at the end of the day, whatever we recommended of about eight of the proposals or submissions or memos that we have sent to you, none returned without an approval. Every time you approved everything we wanted. I'm not surprised that your colleagues in West Africa decided, looking at what was happening back at home, decided to vest you with the responsibility of coordinating the West Africa response. And that is why they made you the champion of COVID-19 in West Africa. And that you have excelled. We have provided our country as the hope. We have facilitated the distribution of materials we are still doing up to today so that our sister West African countries would enjoy 
the latitude of your benevolence and also leadership. Today, Mr. President and the Vice President have equally demonstrated leadership by offering themselves for the Nigerian people to believe in the safety and the efficacy of the vaccines that we have procured and is being deployed. I think vaccine hesitancy would have to give way now to the reality. Because the truth about it, Your Excellency, is that very soon, nobody will be able to travel the world unless you produce the certificate that you have been given. I have not confirmed, but reliably, some countries have started putting restrictions on receiving visitors, even for exercising activities of their faith without a COVID-19 vaccination certificate. So the word that is going out there on behalf of Mr. President is that Nigerians should make themselves available those that are eligible in the first set of the deployment, because the deployment is going to be in four phases to receive these vaccines. They have been tested. Our most strategic leadership have received them this morning. They are safe, they are efficacious, and it is for the good and well-being of our people. With these few remarks, I want to thank you, Mr. President and the Vice President, for this leadership that you have provided this morning to the Nigerian people. And I wish us well, and I urge Nigerians to make themselves available, and not to listen to any conspiracy theories, and not to listen to any misinformation, but to make themselves available as eligible Nigerians to receive these vaccines when it is their turn to do so. I will also want to leave this word that the administration of this vaccine under the leadership and coordination of the task force, but the Ministry of Health and its agency, the Primary Healthcare Development Agency, have got the constitutional and the executive responsibility of applying and administering these vaccines. They will do that. And the minister has already mentioned that any unauthorized processes of vaccination should be discontinuous. Because very soon, as you have the genuine, the fake ones will start to surface. That will be the responsibility of NAPDA to provide us with the protection that our people require. Thank you, and God bless us. Honorable Minister of Health and Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed <laughs> from Kwara <Quara> State. <laughs> Other Honorable Ministers. Permanent Secretaries, Executive Director, and Directors General present here, Senior Governor of Health, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, dear compatriots, humanity has remained under the burden of coronavirus pandemic and unseen but very potent enemy around the world. Infection from the virus has resulted in over 2,500,000 fatalities and destroyed several global and national systems. The response in Nigeria and ECOWAS sub-region has been robust collaborative and united. It was driven by a collective knowledge of the fact that no country is safe until every country is safe. The speedy development of the coronavirus vaccines is quite significant and underscores the collective resolve of humanity to overcome the pandemic. Similarly, the collaborative effort to ensure equal access has brought relief to poor and developing countries. I have been assured by the Presidential Task Force that the AstraZeneca vaccine, which Nigeria has accessed, 
will arrive in batches beginning with the first batch of about 4 million doses already received. I am similarly aware of the rollout and the administration plan to cater for over 70 percent of our population between the year 2021 and 2022. Yesterday, our frontline medical personnel, top on the priority list, were vaccinated. Today, as a demonstration of leadership and faith in the safety and efficacy of the vaccines, I have received my first jab and I wish to commend it to all eligible Nigerians to do the same so that we can be protected from the virus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. I congratulate the Federal Task Force on Coronavirus on the successful and multi-sectoral approach to the management of this pandemic. Finally, I wish to acknowledge and to command the support of governments, our donors, development partners, the private sector, traditional and religious leaders, as well as critical stakeholders who have supported Nigeria thus far. I assure you that the resources will be equitably administered. I thank you all for your kind attention. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.